For decades, author and educator Jackson Katz has called on the men to set the tone and speak out. He delivered this message in a popular TED Talk called Violence Against Women. It's a men's issue. That talk has received more than three and a half million views. There's so many men who care deeply about these issues, but caring deeply is not enough. We need more, we need more men with the guts, with the courage, with the strength, with the moral integrity to break our complicit silence and challenge each other and stand with women, not against them. Jackson Katz is the founder and president of MVP Strategies. He's provided sexual harassment and violence training for several sports teams and the military. Good morning. Good morning. It's a men's issue. What does that mean? It means that historically people have seen issues like sexual harassment and domestic violence and sexual assault as women's issues that some good men help out with. But a big part of my work is helping people to think differently about this subject. And I would say that these aren't women's issues that good men help out with. They're actually men's issues. Men have an incredibly important role to play. Men are committing the vast majority of the abuse, the harassment, and the violence. And until men stand with women as, our, as their partners and allies in this work, um, we're only going to be cleaning up after the fact. We need to do a whole lot more. So if I'm a man, which turns out I am, yes. and, I, uh, am not be, and I'm not doing anything, and I might think, well, what's my role? So what am I, how am I supposed to think differently? All men, I think, at all, levels of their, at all levels of society and whatever their sphere of influence have to make it clear to the people around them that abusing women in any way, verbally, emotionally, physically, sexually, is unacceptable, not just because it's illegal and they're going to get in trouble, but because the peer culture doesn't accept it, other men as well as women don't accept it. This is a message that adult men need to be sending, not just to each other, although that's true, but to young men and boys who have to hear it from men as well as women, that the way to treat women, you know, treating women with respect is not an option. It is, it is men. It's just how you treat people with respect and dignity. And if you don't do it, you're going to be in trouble, not just again with the authorities, but with your friends, with your peers, with your teammates, with your classmates, with your colleagues. If we can change the social norms in male culture that allow this behavior to go on, you're going to see a, a significant diminution because it's not about individual sick men who are doing this. A lot of the men who are committing these acts of abuse and harassment are otherwise normal yeah, men. You said they're, they're mostly normal men. That's right. The perpetrators outside of this are normal men in all situations. Mm -hmm. That's what right. What do you mean by that? Because what is our perception and what do you mean? The perception, I think, is that some, you know, Freddy Krueger-like twisted character is committing these acts of aggression or abuse, like on college campuses, rapists are some, some monstrous individuals. They're normal guys. Most guys who commit rape on college campuses are otherwise normal guys. They go to class or they don't go to class. They're in fraternities or they're not. They're, they're athletes or they're not. They're just normal guys. But the question that that begs is, why are no otherwise normal guys doing this, and what does it mean to be normal in this society? In other words, if it's not just crazy individuals, but actually much broader than that, then it implicates the various institutions of the society that shape what we expect from men and boys. So I'm really curious, because you pioneered this bystander training. What does that mean? How do you do it? Well, the bystander approach is a way to move beyond the perpetrator-victim Binary. In other words, instead of focusing on men as perps and women as victims, or women as perpetrators and men as victims, or any combination, it focuses on everybody in a given peer culture as what we call a bystander, which is a friend, a teammate, a classmate, a colleague, a coworker. Right? Almost like an honor code. Yeah, yeah honor code, sure. But but it's 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 giving people tools to challenge and interrupt abusive behavior when they see it, and not just at the point of attack. Not Give just, us an example. Give us an example. You're a guy, and you're hanging out with a group of guys, and there are no women in the room, mm -hmm. and one or two of the guys start making sexist and degrading comments about girls or women. Instead of laughing along or being silent in the face of that, it's interrupting that by saying, hey, that's not funny, man. You can't talk about it like that. It's just like with racism. If you're a white person and you're hanging out with a group of white people and one or two of those white people start making racist comments, if you don't challenge them on that, in a sense, your silence is a form of consent and complicity and in their percent. racism. You what the president called locker room talk. Yeah. You yeah. made an interesting observation about the Golden Globes the other night that I hadn't thought of until you, until you pointed it out. Yeah, the Golden Globes was an incredible moment. It wasn't just because of the, uh, the awards for the people who did great work. It was an incredible historical and cultural moment where so many women were coming forward and talking publicly in a very, you know, with a bright spotlight about not only experiences that they had had, but highlighting the experiences of women all over the world. And it's a great historical moment, but yet all the men who came up to get awards and present didn't say anything. They didn't say anything. Mm -hmm. And on the, on the red carpet, yes, some of them said, you know, we yeah. support women. I'm very proud of her. What we didn't hear from men, either on the arrival or from the stage at all, was men saying, as a man, I'm in a position here because of, because of the bright spotlight to say, as a man, I support women, and I'm going to do whatever I can to challenge other men to stand up and speak up 
and support women and make this a movement that is transcendent. Why do you think they didn't say anything? I think a lot of men don't know what to say. Uh -huh. I think a lot of men don't haven't ever heard other men say this, so they haven't seen it modeled. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of men are afraid of stepping in it. In other words, they don't know what to say, and therefore they worry that they're going to say the wrong thing and then get pushed back. So I, I mean, I think that there's a generous way of thinking about why men didn't say anything. Okay. Not that they're perpetrators, but that they just don't know what to say. And I think part of what we're doing here is just showing men you can talk about this. And please talk and, about and, it. Yes, please talk about it. Jackson, right. Jackson, Jackson. Good to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so